up for I will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in their houses, and their righteousness endures forever. They rise up in the darkness as a light for the upright. They are gracious, merciful, and righteous. It is well with those who deal generously and lend, who conduct their affairs with justice. For the righteous will never be moved. They will be remembered forever. They are not afraid of evil tidings. Their hearts are firm, secure in the Lord. Their hearts are steady. They will not be afraid. In the end, they will look in triumph on their foes. They have distributed freely. They have given to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their horn is exalted in honor. The wicked see it and are angry. They gnash their teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked comes to nothing. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <laughs> God, your word is perfect, and I am not. Use me anyway. Open the scripture to us and draw us close to you. Amen. Praying is like breathing. Breathing is essential to our physical life, right? If we stop breathing, things go bad. In the same way, praying is like that for our spiritual life. Praying is the way that we draw close to God, which we're doing here in worship, but throughout the day, as we offer prayers to God. Praying keeps us connected with the God who created us. It's essential for our spiritual life. Phil Nancy um, is a Christian author, written a book on prayer, and he makes a really good case that um, prayer actually serves a purpose to shape our hearts more like God. And I think what he's trying to say, well, it makes sense to me if I think about how when I spend a lot of time with certain people, I start to act like them. Have you ever noticed that? I went to visit a friend uh, while she was living in London, spent a week there, and uh, by about Thursday, I was developing a British accent. <laughs> I am not British, <laughs> and I was also not trying to do that on purpose, but we have this way of becoming like the people that we're around. And so it makes sense to me that a big part of the purpose of prayer is that we're spending time with God, and that time we spend with God causes us to begin to imitate God. Praying is like breathing, essential to our spiritual life. And yet praying is also not at all like breathing, because breathing is something we just know how to do. From our first infant cry, we know how to breathe, and we know it so well that we don't even have to think about whether or not we breathe, it just happens. Prayer, on the other hand, can take a little effort. And in fact, sometimes as we get started in it, or as we grow deeper in it, it can even feel unnatural as we're trying to figure out exactly what to talk to God about. God is, after all, <coughs> the strong, silent type, often doing much more listening than talking. And because of that, sometimes our prayers can start to feel like a filibuster effort. We're just talking and talking about whatever comes to mind, hoping that it's what God wants to hear about. <coughs> sometimes I feel like my prayers can be... Um, as, as though I got an interview with someone important, like uh, Stephen Hawking, brilliant man. But if I had a chance to actually sit with Stephen Hawking, I'd have no idea what to say or ask about. And sometimes prayers can feel like that, as we humbly draw before our creator, God, maker of the whole universe. What do we even say? Now, other times, we know exactly what to say. We need help, and we need it now. We need it yesterday. And we are begging God for wisdom, begging God for answers, for some kind of solution, and God seems quiet. In my experience, as I look back on these times, I can often see how God was at work to answer my prayer, but it doesn't feel like that in the moment. I remember as a teenager, uh, my mom and I would get in fights, normal mother-daughter stuff. Mom was a quick debater, and there was no besting her at verbal sparring. So I learned that my best defense was to 
she hated that. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes when I pray um, and I'm really desperate for an answer, I need guidance, God, I need it, and God doesn't seem to be saying anything, it can feel like God is doing that back to me. <laughs> Prayer is as essential to our spiritual life as breathing, and yet it can be really hard. In seminary, I asked a professor how to pray. Seminary professors like books. I figured, surely there was some book on the subject I could be assigned, and I just followed that. And this professor very wisely told me, praying is best learned by just doing it. Just pray, and you'll figure it out. Now, I think that is deeply true, but it was profoundly irritating. And unhelpful. <laughs> because that night when I got down on my knees to pray again, I still wasn't quite sure what to say or if I was doing this right at all. Since then, I've come across a resource that I find incredibly helpful. And if I could go back, uh, I would still have my seminary professor give me that answer, but with an addition. Because praying is best learned by doing. She should tell me that. But here's the second part. Praying is best learned by doing, and you can start doing it by praying the Psalms. The Psalms are a book in our Old Testament, and they're about halfway through the Bible. So if you open your Bible at random to the middle, odds are good you'll be there. And you'll know you're there because Psalms is one of the few books in our Bible that is written in poetic form. So the lines have that staggered look of poetry. The Psalms um, are mostly either hymns written to be used in worship, or um, they're poems intended for personal devotion. And so whether they fall in one category or the other, that makes them perfect to be used as models for prayer. And in fact, for thousands and thousands of years, Christians and Jewish uh, believers alike have been using the Psalms as prayer. Eugene Peterson is another author I really like. He's a smart guy and a pastor who knows a lot about the Bible. And um, I wanted to read you something he says about the Psalms. The great and sprawling university that Hebrews and Christians have attended to learn to answer God, to learn to pray, has been the Psalms. More people have learned to pray by matriculating in the Psalms than in any other way. The Psalms were the prayer book of Israel. They were the prayer book of Jesus. They are the prayer book of the church. At no time in the Hebrew and Christian centuries, with the possible exception of our own 20th century, have the Psalms not been at the very center of all concern and practice in prayer. We can learn to pray by doing, and the Psalms are a great gift in that doing. Because they're already written for us. If you've ever tried to go to God in prayer and struggled to know what to say, I would recommend praying the Psalms for a while. And in fact, this is what I've been doing, anticipating that we'd be in the Psalms for a while this summer. I've been praying a psalm before I go to God um, early in the morning. And then praying a psalm before I lift up our church prayer list somewhere in the middle of the day. And then praying a psalm before I go to bed at night. And I'm finding that it's a beautiful gift to have these prayers already written for me. Some of which feel natural, others of which feel strange, but all of which are drawing me closer to God. To do that essential work of spending time with God in prayer. Praying the psalms is a great gift to us. Now there's that little point blank um, application where we can read them out loud as we've done already here in worship. But I think the Psalms also teach us some general applications about prayers, about different ways that we can pray. And today I want to highlight um, one way in particular um, that Mary Rachel has already done a good job of alluding to. There are several Psalms in the book of Psalms that are called acrostic Psalms. Acrostic. And this is a form of poetry uh, that follows the alphabet. Um, so it starts with A and works its way to Z in our English alphabet, with each line starting with a different letter. So um, I want to give you an example. Um, I'm no poet, but here's a, a poem I attempted to start about the eclipse that will come to Andrews uh, sometime in August, August 21st. Andrews, North Carolina, population 1800. 
100. But on the day when the moon will cover the sun, it will be destination Andrews for the whole southeast. All right, so if I wanted to finish it, I'd keep going on from A to Z. So you get, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> so um, we started uh, worship with Psalm 111, and that's one of the acrostic psalms. So it's there printed for you in your bulletin. And here are the opening lines of Psalm 112 for you again, another acrostic psalm. But as you look at this, you might think, Pastor Mary is a liar, because they don't start A, B, C, D, do they? But you're very smart people also, so I bet some of you are figuring out why each line doesn't start with a subsequent letter of the alphabet. Why is that? Hebrew. So the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. So when you open your Bible, those acrostic psalms, they don't jump out to us because it's been lost in translation. But so, I'm not really good at Hebrew, but I can take a picture of a page in a Hebrew Bible, so here you go. Here's a Psalm 112 in the Hebrew. Um, Hebrew, unlike English, runs right to left. So to see these um, uh, letters of the Hebrew alphabet, you see them lining up on the right side of the page, working um, all the way through the, I, I believe, 23 characters of the Hebrew alphabet. It's kind of cool. Uh, so here, I think there's a, a literal and um, a more general uh, application for the model that these psalms give us. Because to me, uh, they give us a gift in giving us a format to work with. So some of you might like to try your hand at literally applying this. If you like to write, even if you're not very good about it, this might be something you want to play with. To try and write your own acrostic song. And it is perfectly okay to journal prayers in writing rather than say them out loud. So to try and start with the letter A, work through to Z, and talk to and about God using different letters of the alphabet. Or, I really like Mary Rachel's simplified form, just to take a letter and give thanks, or, or give one word that describes God. This gives us a format to work in when we pray so that we don't have to start from scratch. But here's a more general application um, that might be useful to you and has been tremendously useful for me as a tool for prayer. A, a similar idea to an acrostic is an acronym. And an acronym, of course, is a word where each letter stands for another word. So long ago in youth group, I learned about praying a part prayer. So I've got um, that for you to go on the screen. So a part prayer is an acronym um, where we get four different parts of a prayer that we can work through. If you've ever sat down to pray and felt unsure about what to talk to God about, I especially want to recommend this. Because if you pray through these four parts, you will end up with a very nicely well-rounded prayer. So to start by praising God, telling God you are awesome, I love you, in the same way that you would do for a, a loved one that you have in human relationships. Then take time to ask God for things. And this is usually the part that we're best at. But remember to ask for things for yourself and also for others. Then to move on to repent, to ask for forgiveness, to think back over the previous day and ways in which you've not loved God with your whole heart or have failed to love your neighbor as yourself. Ask God for forgiveness and in confidence because we know that 2,000 years ago on the cross, our forgiveness was secured. <coughs> then, thank God. Think back over your day again. Think of all the good things that happened and what you can give God thanks for. And I think you'll find when you're done that you've had plenty to talk to God about, and also that um, it feels complete, like we've covered the bases that we need to cover between us. I hope that one of these ways is helpful to you this week, because praying truly is like breathing. It is absolutely essential to our spiritual life. And as Mary Rachel said, there's no wrong way to do it, except to not do it at all. And so if you are new to prayer, or if you found your prayer life in a bit of a rut, then you might try praying the Psalms, or writing.
writing an acrostic prayer or using this part prayer as a model. But whatever you do, just pray. Spend time with our Creator God. And as you spend more and more time with God, you'll find yourself imitating God more and more, shaped into God's child. Amen. 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 Just starting today.